Today's lesson, we're learning how to divide decimals by whole numbers. So by the end of this lesson, we should be able to divide decimals by whole numbers. Let's remember our um, vocabulary words real quickly here. Remember the quotient is the answer in a, in a division problem. The divisor is the number going into the dividend. The dividend is what's being broken up into pieces when we're dividing it. All right. <clears throat> Dan opened a savings account at a bank to save for a new snowboard. He earned $3.48 of interest on his savings account over a three-month period. What was the average amount of interest Dan earned per month on his savings account? So, we're finding out how much he uh, interest he earned each month. So we're going to divide $3.48 by 3. So first we're going to estimate, and they gave us the numbers here. Make sure, remember from previous lessons, make sure that you're using easy numbers for your um, estimates. They're compatible numbers. They're easy to multiply or divide or add or subtract. So they rounded um, this down to 3, which makes sense because the number behind um, the whole number three is a four. Um, and then this number's three. So those were easy compatible numbers. So three divided by three is one. Our final answer, therefore, should be right around the number one. And we estimate to make sure that our final answer is reasonable. <clears throat> okay, so... Um, they're saying here in the notes, three and 48 cents or uh, three and 48 hundredths is shared among three groups. Therefore, we're gonna divide it into, divide <clears throat> them down to just how much it is per group, each group. So three goes into three one time. Notice that the one goes directly above that three. And then they brought the decimal up and put this Put the decimal in the quotient. Three goes into four one time also. Uh, oh, we brought down the four. Uh, three times one is three. Now we bring down the eight. Well, we subtracted, brought down the eight. Three goes into 18 six times. And three times six is 18. Then we subtract and we're left over with a zero. All right, so now let's check our answer. Uh, our final answer was one and 16 hundredths or $1 and 16 cents is how much he earned each month. We're gonna make sure that that is correct, that our division was correct. 3 times 6 is 18, regroup the 1. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 1 more is 4. 3 times 1 is 3. There are two digits behind the decimal. Therefore, we scoop over 2 times, put the decimal there. We end up with $3.48, which is the same as the original problem. Therefore, we did our, our um, division problem correctly. So Dan earned an average of $1.16 in interest each month. Okay, let's take a look at the back side. Now we're on page 36. We're going to divide four and 133 thousandths by seven, <clears throat> 42, pardon me. We're gonna divide 42 mm -hmm. and 133 thousandths by seven. So first we're gonna estimate. And 42 and seven are compatible numbers because seven goes into 42 evenly six times. So that's why they chose those two numbers for the estimate. All right, seven goes into 42 six times. And then we multiply seven times six, put that 
um, product right there and subtract. We end up with 42. Take that away at 0. Bring down the 1. 7 does not go into 1, but we still have to put a number above that 1 in the um, dividend, and therefore we put a 0. Notice that they immediately brought up the decimal also. You can do that with division, which is really great. Just immediately bring that decimal, put it right up into that quotient. All right, so we subtract the zero, bring down the one again, bring down the three. All right, seven goes into 13 one time. Make sure that one goes above the three. Uh, seven times one is seven. Now I subtract 13, take away seven is six, bring down the three. Seven goes into 63 nine times. That's 63 and 63 take away 63 is zero. Now we'll check our answer by multiplying, which is the inverse operation, meaning it's the opposite operation. Multiplication and division are inverse operations. They undo each other. Um, and this will help us check our answer. Here we go. 7 times 9 is 63. 7 times 1 is 7. Plus 6 more is 13. Regroup that 1. 7 times 0 is 0. Plus 1 more is 1. 7 times 6 is 42. Now, where does that decimal go? Well, there's one, two, three digits behind the decimal, so I have to make sure there's one, two, three digits behind the decimal in the answer, and that's where the decimal goes. So, and since that was our original problem, we've done the, um, the division problem correctly. So, 42 and 133 thousandths divided by 7 is 6 and 19 thousandths. Good. All right, let's do one more at the bottom. We have <clears throat> 24 and 186 thousandths divided by 6. Then we're going to find the quotient, check your answers by multiplying at the end. We're going to start by estimating. Let's take a look at these two numbers. Now, we don't want a decimal in our estimate. So let's take a look at, we've got 24 and 6. Well, that's easy, isn't it? We're just going to leave it 24 and 6 because 6 does go into 24. 24 divided by 6 is 4. So our final answer should be in the ballpark of 4. Okay, so they didn't give us a whole lot of room to work here. Plus, I just like using graph paper to line up my um, problems. I think it helps uh, me stay organized, so I'm going to use a little graph paper and transfer the problem on to here. All right, so I have six as my divisor. I have 24. Notice each number gets its own square, and that's going to help us stay organized. All right, so six, how many times does six go into two? It does not. Six goes into 24 four times. I can immediately bring up my decimal right now, and I suggest you do that so you um, write your final answer correctly. Six times four is 24, subtract. All right, now bring down the one. Six goes into one zero times. It does not. Now, notice I didn't put a zero out here. That's because um, we just don't have anything in the tenths place. When there's a zero out front, you don't have to include it. However, this zero is holding the place because six um, uh, being divided into here, I, I will have a number in the hundredths place. Therefore, I need this placeholder in the tenths place. So I do have to have a zero here. All right, so we're gonna subtract that zero because six times zero is zero. Subtract the one, bring down the eight. All right, six goes into 18 three times. Nice and tidy. 
Um, so now I need to bring down the six. Six goes into six one time. And that is my final answer. So notice that graph paper helps us stay organized with our decimals. It's really a good uh, resource to use when you're doing your um, math. All right, I'm going to transfer this answer onto my piece of paper now. All right, we ended up with 4 and 31 thousandths for our final answer. Um, if I was turning this in and this was blank, I would staple, if, if, I ha if I'd written on a piece of scratch paper to do my work, I'd staple that on and show it to the teacher because they want to see that you know how to do the work and that you didn't just use a calculator to get this answer. All right, now, so is this reasonable? Yes, it is reasonable because we ended up with four here and four there. So four and 31 thousandths is very close to four. Let's go ahead and check our answer to make sure that it is perfectly accurate. All right, six times one is six. Six times three is 18, regroup the one. Six times zero, zero plus one more. Uh, is 1. 6 times 4 is 24. There are 1, 2, 3 numbers behind the decimal, therefore there needs to be 1, 2, 3 numbers behind the decimal here also. So we end up with 24 and 186 thousandths, which was our original problem, therefore we did our uh, math correctly. All right, let's take a look at our notes. All right, 1.8, divide whole numbers, uh, sorry, divide decimals by whole numbers. So we begin by estimating using compatible whole numbers. Okay, so we take a decimal and we round it to a compatible whole number that works with the divisor. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, divide using an algorithm. Um, put the decimal in the quotient at the beginning. So you can do that right at the beginning. Just bring that decimal right up and put it in the quotient. Um, I, it, often you'll hear um, the teacher say, bring up the decimal. Use the same steps as regular long division from then on in the rest of the problem. That's the only difference in this long division problem is there's a decimal. That's it. So. Um, then we go ahead and this is a second example of um, how to do it. All right, be sure and copy down the notes in your notebook.